Sadly, his father Priam mourned for him, not knowing that young Asicus had assumed wings on his shoulders and was yet alive. Then also Hector, with his brothers, made complete but unavailing sacrifice upon a tomb which bore his carved name. Paris was absent, but soon afterwards he brought into that land a ravished wife, Helen of Troy, the cause of a disastrous war, together with a thousand ships and all the great Pelasgian nation. Here, when a sacrifice had been prepared to Jove, according to the custom of their land, and when the ancient altar glowed with fire, the Greeks observed an azure colored snake crawling up in a plain tree near the place where they had just begun their sacrifice. Among the highest branches was a nest with twice four birds and those the serpent seized together with the mother bird as she was fluttering round her loss, and every bird the serpent buried in his greedy maw. All stood amazed, but Calchas, who perceived the truth, exclaimed, Rejoice, Pelasgian men, for we shall conquer, Troy will fall, although the toil of war must long continue. So the nine birds equaled nine long years of war. And while he prophesied, the serpent, coiled about the tree, was transformed into a stone, curled crooked as a snake. Rejoice, Pelasgian nation, Ovid's Metamorphosis. Welcome back, history enthusiasts, to another captivating journey through the annals of time. Today we delve into the mysteries of the ancient world, where powerful civilizations thrived, empires rose and fell, and forgotten cultures left indelible imprints on the tapestry of human history. In this episode, we lock the secrets of the enigmatic Pelasgians and embark on an exploration of the captivating Bronze Age world, where the Hittites, Minoans, and Mycenaeans held sway. The Pelasgians, a name echoing across millennia, remain shrouded in the mist of time. Who were these enigmatic people? What stories lie hidden within their ancient ruins? Join us as we unravel the tangled threads of their civilization and uncover the traces that they left behind. Venturing into the Bronze Age, we encounter the mighty Hittites, a civilization that dominated Anatolia and beyond. The Hittites forged an empire that stood as a formidable rival to the great powers of the ancient world. Together, we will unearth their monumental achievements, uncover their strategic brilliance, and witness the remarkable legacies they left for future generations. Next, we will also sail to the sun-soaked island of Crete, where the Minoans thrived in an era of opulence and artistic splendor. From the majestic palace of Knossos to the mysterious rituals captured in vibrant frescoes, we will step into the footsteps of a civilization that celebrated nature, embraced innovation, and shaped the destiny of the Aegean culture. Finally, our journey brings us to the towering walls of Mycenae, the seat of a warrior society that ignited the imagination of poets, historians alike. Join us as we uncover the dramatic tales of the Mycenaeans whose heroes and heroines blazed a trail of legend and left an enduring mark on the stage of ancient Greece. Prepare to be mesmerized by the tales of lost civilizations, their triumphs and their tragedies. Come with us on this extraordinary voyage through time as we explore the realms of the Pelasgians 
Hittites, Minoans, and Mycenaeans, and the later coming of the Dorian invasion, which moved the Greek world to the east and the west, a journey that will forever change the way you perceive the past. The Pelasgians were an ancient people who inhabited various regions of the Eastern Mediterranean, particularly in the Aegean area, during the Bronze Age and Copper Age. Much of what we know about them is shrouded in mystery and subject to debate among historians and archaeologists. Some ancient sources believe that they are indigenous people of modern-day Greece, while others suggest that they might have migrated from different regions, including the Black Sea region, Anatolia, or the Balkans. Their precise ethnicity and language remained unresolved, though a combination of Proto-Indo-European and native Mediterranean is most likely. The earliest references to the Pelasgians can be found in the ancient Greek literature of Homer, Herodotus, and Thucydides. In the Iliad, the Pelasgians are on both sides of the Trojan War. When Homer explains who the ancient Trojans are, the Pelasgians are mentioned between Hellespontine cities and Thrace. Homer calls their own town or district Larissa and characterizes it as fertile and its inhabitants as celebrated for their spearsmanship. He records their chiefs as Hippothous and Pileus, sons of Lethus and Tutamedes. The Iliad also refers to the camp at Greece, specifically at Argos Pelasgion, which is most likely to be the plain of Thessaly, and to the Pelasgic Zeus, living and ruling over Dodona, one of the ancient wonders of the world. According to Homer, Pelasgians were camping out on the shore together with the following tribes. Towards the sea lies the Carians and the Paeonians with curved bows and leliges and cocones and the goodly Pelasgi. In the Odyssey, they appear among the inhabitants of Crete, which would possibly equate them with the Minoans themselves, who invented purple dye and migrated east towards the coastal Levant and conquered Egypt. More on the Minoans later. Odysseus, affecting to be a Cretan himself, instances the Pelasgians among the tribes in the 90 cities of Crete, language mixing with language side by side. Last on his list, Homer distinguishes them from other ethnicities on the island. Cretans proper, Achaeans, Sidonians, Dorians, and the noble Pelasgians. A fragment from Hesiod calls the Dona, identified by a reference to the oak, the seat of the Pelasgians, thus explaining why Homer, in referring to Zeus as he ruled over Dodona, did not style him Dodonic, but Pelasgic Zeus. He mentions also that Pelasgus was the father of King Lycaon of Arcadia. <laughs> 